This is the next transformation that we're going to look at, and it's called a rotation. A rotation is when a figure is rotated around a point called the center of rotation. And a rotation is also called a turn, and you can see all that information is in the picture underneath. We've got the center where we rotate. Typically, uh, when we will be rotating, it will be at the origin. But as you get more advanced, as you get into high school, you'll be rotating around random points on the coordinate grid. We've got our angle. Uh, and when we turn, we always go clockwise. If you think of one of those clocks with the hands that spin around, we've got this direction, which is clockwise, which we will abbreviate as CW. And then there's also the um, direction that goes backwards, the opposite way that a clock goes, and that is called counterclockwise, which we will abbreviate as CCW. So when you hear your rotations, a lot of times you'll hear the words clockwise or counterclockwise. Clockwise turns to the right, counterclockwise turns to the left. All right, let's look at example one. You must rotate the puzzle piece 270 degrees clockwise about point P to fit into a puzzle. Which piece fits the puzzle as shown? All right, first thing we need to do is talk about the degrees of rotation. So turn your paper with me. We're going clockwise. Okay, so this is a 90 degree rotation. Every time we do like a right angle turn, we're going to consider it 90. Um, that's a 180. That's upside down. That was two 90s. And now we do another one. That's 270. And then back to the original, we have 360. Now in high school, you're going to do different degrees, not multiples of 90. You might do 30, 60, 45 degrees. But as beginner level, we're going to just do multiples of 90 because that's easy with the rotation on the paper. Also, it's helpful in the quadrants. So back to the question. Let's turn our paper 270 degrees clockwise. So we've got 90, 180, 270. Now what we have to do is I want you to look at the puzzle piece right here, the one that they gave us as the sample, and I want you to just grab a piece of scrap paper nearby. And we're going to draw the picture as we see it. We're going to make a little sketch. So I'm going to sketch. It's got like a bump at the top, comes out, it's got a bump on the left, and it's got that hole in the middle, and it's flat. All right, so that's my sketch. So now I'm going to turn my paper back, and I'm going to look at which choice looks like that. Because once I turn my paper back, it's going to look different. So I need a separate piece of paper to look at what um, the rotation looked like. So now we have to match it, and it matches choice C. If you understood the algebra of the translations and the reflections, you might also understand the algebra of rotations. Algebra of rotations is much more tricky because it depends on how many degrees you rotate, but um, I'll just quickly go over this for the algebra people. If you're rotating 90, you have this xy point, and what happens is that the um, coordinates change. They, they just switch, and the first number, the new number, changes its sign. If you're doing a 180, then they stay where they are, but they just turn their sign. So if they were positive, they turn negative. If they were negative, they turn positive. And for a 270, um, they switch, but then the new second number changes its sign. Um, so that's a rotation counterclockwise. If it's clockwise, then it, it's all reversed. So it gets a little tricky with the algebra. I'm going to show you a, a way that avoids all of this memory of the um, switching and changing the signs where we just turn the paper, but you have to have that piece of scrap paper handy. All right, so they give us the vertices of a trapezoid, and they want us to rotate it 180 degrees about the origin. That's just the terminology that we use. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. 
right now at the beginner level and they want us to tell the coordinates. So you're going to pause the video and you're just going to plot that trapezoid WXYZ and then when you're ready click play. Alright, so here's what you do. You take your paper and it says to rotate it 180 degrees. Now it doesn't give you a direction because 180 degrees is two turns, which essentially is upside down. So it doesn't matter which way you turn 180 because upside down is going to be the same in either direction. So let's turn our paper 180. So that's 90 and that's 180. All right. Now what you're going to do is you're going to look at your new shape, or the shape that you're looking at right now, and I want you to ignore the numbers. Boom, numbers gone. And actually, now that we're doing more advanced things rather than just plotting points, I actually don't want you to put numbers on your grid. The graph paper has lines that's going to go by ones. Unless you're not going by ones, we don't number the grid. So now we're going to look at the grid and we're going to say what are the new coordinates that we're looking at. So now if we look at W, whoops, the new W, W prime, is going to be at 4, negative 2. So if I go to plot W, it would be 4 to the right, 2 down. That's 4, negative 2 where x is, is now at 3, negative 4, because it's 3 to the right, 4 down. y is now at 1, negative 4, and z is now at 1, negative 2. So now I'm going to turn my paper back. Sorry, technical difficulties. I had to kind of do that on my own. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're just going to plot those points and then we're done because we know what it's going to look like after the rotation. So the rotated um, points are 4, negative 2, and that was W prime. Make sure that you have the letters because if you don't, then you have to rotate it back and figure out what they were. X prime is going to be at 3, negative 4. y prime is at 1, negative 4, and z prime is at 1, negative 2. So kind of sloppy, but that's what it looks like. And we already have the coordinates because we did that first. All right, let's move on to example 3. The vertices of a rectangle are a negative 3, negative 3, B, 1, 3, negative 3, C, negative 5, and D, negative 3, negative 5. Rotate the triangle 90 degrees counterclockwise and then reflect it in the y-axis. So we're doing two things. What are the coordinates of the image? So what they're actually asking you here is like the final image. So they don't need the, the coordinates beforehand, we might need to get them, but the answer is going to be that very last image. So first thing we're going to do is pause the video and plot A, B, C, D. Alright, so now what we do is we rotate the triangle 90 degrees counterclockwise. So we're going to turn our paper one turn to the left. So here we go. One turn to the left. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write what those coordinates are off to the side. Now remember, forget those numbers. And you might say, why are the numbers even there? Well, the grid came like that, sorry. So let's write what the new coordinates are. So A prime is at 3, negative 3. B prime is at 3, 1. C prime is at 5, 1. And D prime is at 5, negative 3. So now I can turn my paper back and plot those points. That's the rotation. 
Let's plot those points. A prime is at 3, negative 3. B prime is at 3, 1. C prime is at 5, 1. And D prime is at 5, negative 3. So there's the rotated rectangle. And now we have to then take that and reflect it in the y-axis. So I'm going to darken my y-axis, and that's what I'm going to flip over. So I'm going to count boxes. A prime is three boxes to the right, so its image is three boxes to the left. Oh, that's actually where it was originally. Look at that. That's A double prime. Um, B double prime is three boxes to the right, so its image will be three boxes to the left. And C double prime is um, five boxes to the right, so its image will be five boxes to the left. Also, you can count its two boxes away from B prime, and also D prime as well is two boxes. So I know it overlaps, it might freak you out, don't worry. And now we just have to get the image, uh, final image, we need the coordinates. So A double prime is at negative three, uh, one, negative three. Oh, that's where it started. Uh, B double prime is at um, negative three, one. C double prime is at negative 5, 1, and D double prime is at negative 5, negative 3. All right, let's move on. I'd like you to read the story and plot the four points that represent you and your three friends. It says you and your friends have rotated 270 clockwise and they want to know what your locations are at the end of the ride. So we're going to turn our paper 270 clockwise. Uh, clockwise, so that is going to be three turns. So one, two, three. Let's write down the coordinates. And A is at uh, four, negative four. I didn't get rid of the numbers, but just pretend they're not there. B is now at 0, negative 3. C is now at uh, 2, negative 1. And D is now at um, 3, negative 2. Let's turn our paper back. And they actually don't even want us to plot the points. So that is the answer. So you just put this here. So just fill that in in the space. That's it for rotations. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.